Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're back with a kind of impromptu update video because there was a pretty big reveal today and that is the Nightmare of Shima. Now this piece of content was originally revealed at RuneFest 2019 but we already have a poll blog for it uh, with some potential rewards, mechanics and lore behind the actual new boss fight. The Nightmare of Shima was kind of described in the RuneFest blog as uh, a group boss kind of similar to the Corporal Beast, to both be challenging and accessible. They said the Nightmare is expected to be released earlier than Sins of the Father and the Dark Mare City, and that certainly does seem to be the case, as we already have a poll blog in late November. They did run a player design competition to come up with some of the new rewards. I'm not sure if they took any of those, but there are quite a few different rewards proposed already. Now, there is a bit of lore that they have included in this poll blog, and I'm not really sure why the lore was that important to present at first. I'm not sure how many people are making decisions based on lore. Now, first up here, we have an image of the new boss arena, and it kind of looks like it is on a raised up platform, which I think it looks really cool, probably in the town of Slep. So the Nightmare of Ashima came from an island called Ashima. For a long time, the island was plagued by nightmares. The sirens' dreams were stolen and feasted upon by a force beyond all reckoning. A band of brave sirens led by Shura defeated the creatures in its own lair, but somehow it escaped across the ocean to Mauritania, and where else would a creature of nightmare hide but the cursed town of Slep? Now, Shura needs your help to enter the Sisterhood Sanctuary below the town of Slep and defeat the Nightmare once and for all. And we also have a work-in-progress image of Shura, the siren, which I guess is the one who will initiate the boss fight. Now there is a bunch of lore about the Sisterhood Sanctuary, but again, not really sure why that was super relevant. I don't think anyone was going to base their vote off of the lore, I don't think anyway. However, we do have a few pictures of the Sisterhood Sanctuary, which does look very cool. I do like the designs of the wall. Okay, now let's have a look at the Nightmare itself. Now first up here, it looks amazing in my opinion. It looks terrifying. I saw a comment on Reddit saying that it looks kind of like one of the hags in It 2, which I definitely see. Again, it still is a work in progress, but I think it looks very good so far. Okay, so the Nightmare is a group boss, as I mentioned, located in the Sisterhood Sanctuary below Slep. You can access the boss by running south of Port Phasmatis or by paying 10,000 coins to Adris, north of the Ectofungus, to take a boat. Shiro will be found outside of the boss room, offering information about the fight. Now, what's kind of interesting to me is it looks like the boss fight is on the roof, as per the first image, but here it seems to be underground. I'm assuming that you probably go onto the roof for the boss fight, but you have to enter through the Sisterhood Sanctuary to get there and start it. When the first player steps through the barrier, a timer will count down to the arrival of the Nightmare to allow more players to enter the encounter. Once the Nightmare spawns, no more players will be allowed to enter her arena until she despawns again, which you will do upon being defeated or when all challengers have left. Dying during the Nightmare fight will cause a hardcore Ironman to lose their status, reverting them to a regular Ironman, so it is not a safe death. Now, finally, after quite a long time, we have some rewards that are heavily magic focused. Not all of them, but there are some really interesting ideas here and I wanna know what you guys think about it. Now, obviously these things are all up for discussion. Nothing is set in stone yet. They are willing to change things. But with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. The first reward is the Inquisitor's Mace. Now, the Inquisitor's Mace is a one-handed crush attack weapon, which is kind of uncommon. A lot of the crush weapons are two-handed, and is pretty much the crush equivalent of the Grazi Rapier. They both have the exact same strength bonus and very similar attack bonuses, except the new Inquisitor's Mace would be for crush. Obviously, this is going to be very good at quite a few different monsters, including Seracnus, uh, Gargoyles, anything that is weak to crush, obviously but it has the added bonus of being a one-handed weapon, where normally the most commonly used crush weapon is the Abyssal Bludgeon. This will actually be a lot better because you'll be able to wear a Defender, which overall is gonna give you a lot more power. For example, the Abyssal Bludgeon has 102 crush attack bonus and 85 strength, and the Inquisitor's Mace has 95 crush attack bonus and 89 strength, so it's very close to being on par with it. I do really like this weapon because I think it is filling in the gap of one-handed crush weapons, which honestly we don't have that many of. The only other ones we have are kind of niche weapons like the Vigora's Chain Maze, the Seracnus Cudgel, stuff like that. So this will definitely be the true best in slot crush weapon, which I think is kind of cool. Okay, next up here we have a really interesting one and that is the Staff of Nightmares and the Orbs. The Staff of Nightmares is a powerful magic weapon once in the possession of the Shamans of Ashima. Through the use of different orbs, the Shamans were able to adapt the staff to any task, giving them complete power over the island. 
So the Nightmare has a rare chance of dropping the Staff of Nightmares. By default, it is a tier 65 magic weapon, non-degradable, and can autocast both standard and ancient spells. It has 16 magic attack bonus and a 15% magic damage boost, which is pretty good, and a base speed interval of 3 seconds. However, the Nightmare also has a chance of dropping different orbs. The orbs are also tradable and can be attached to the Staff of Nightmares, however doing so will make the Staff untradable, and it will also give the Staff a magic requirement of 75. Okay, so the three different orbs are going to give the Staff different effects. The Harmonized Orb, which is going to be the blue one, allows the Staff to cast standard spells a tick faster than normal and removes the tick delay when autocasting. However, you can't do that with Ancient Spells. That could potentially be very good for magic training, or hell, maybe it's just more damage per second, who knows. One of the strongest stats you can increase is your attack speed because that actually gives you so many more attacks per second, attacks per minute, attacks per hour. It is probably universally the stat that will increase your damage per second the most is your attack speed. There's also the Volatile Orb, which is the orange orb, which is going to give the staff a special attack that fires a single spell at the target. This spell requires no runes to use and costs 50% special attack energy. The attack deals up to 65 base damage, oh my god and can be increased further with the use of damage boosting items with a 50% improved accuracy. 65 base damage with magic damage boosting gear. I wouldn't be surprised if you could hit close to 90 or even 100. I didn't even know. I'm not really sure how that is going to be balanced. I don't know if you could use that in PvP to literally just one-shot somebody. So for items like the Tormented Bracelet or the Occult Necklace that really can increase your damage a significant amount, starting with a base of 65, uh, is going to make the special attack really strong. And last up, there's the Eldritch Orb, which is the green orb. Going to be kind of similar to the last one. It gives the staff a special attack that fires a single spell at the target. Uh, the spell requires no runes to cast, but will use 75% special attack energy. The attack deals up to 50 base points. Again, can increase with damage boosting items and restores the caster's prayer points by 50% of the damage dealt. This can boost the caster's prayer points above their prayer level to a maximum of 120. So kind of like an SGS except for magic, it's really hard to say how balanced these things are going to be. I could see any one of these being potentially pretty strong, but I guess it is going to be an expensive weapon, so we'll see. Okay, next up here we have the Siren's Tome, which is going to be an offhand weapon, similar to a Mage's Book. Again, this is going to be a rare drop from the Nightmare. The Tome will be tradable and requires 75 magic to equip. Now this is a very strong offhand weapon. Not only does it have 25 magic attack bonus, it also gives you a 10% magic damage bonus, which as far as I am aware is not on any other magic offhand item. This item has stronger magic damage bonuses overall than the Arcane Spirit Shield. That means that it has no defensive bonuses. And one notable negative is it has a minus 5 prayer, which is a consideration, but I think overall still very, very strong. Okay, and last up here we have the Inquisitor's Armor. The Inquisitor's Armor is going to be a tier 70 defensive armor, requiring 70 strength and 30 defense to equip, uh, which means it will be very popular with certain pure builds. Once again, all tradable, non-degradable, and can be packed into a set at the Grand Exchange. Now overall, this is going to be weaker than a lot of melee armor, and the main reason is that it has such a low defense requirement to equip. It does have the same strength bonus as Bandos, however it has significantly weaker defensive bonuses. But I think it's going to fill a pretty significant niche of players who need this armor set and can't get a higher defense level. So I think it's still going to be extremely valuable. Another kind of interesting stat on the armor is it actually gives you crush attack bonus. Overall giving you a plus 32 crush bonus if you are wearing the entire set. Uh, which again isn't super common on armor. Generally you are in it for the strength bonus or the defensive bonuses. But they don't generally have straight up attack bonuses. Now just to put this in perspective how weak defensively they are. The Inquisitor's armor is probably on par if not weaker than the Obsidian armor when it comes to defensive stats. And that is it for the rewards. I'm actually pretty happy with these. They look pretty well developed. All of the graphics are already done. And I think with a few tweaks these are going to be really cool weapons. There are filling areas that are kind of underserved so far. For example, a magic special attack that's actually good, a top tier crush attack weapon, and the Inquisitor armor kind of fills its own niche. I'm not really sure about the actual tome, that just seems like a straight upgrade for no conceivable purpose, but I think it's going to be extremely valuable when it comes out. And that is pretty much it for the Nightmare of Ashima. A lot of interesting ideas to throw around. Again, all subject to change, but what do you guys think about it? Do you like the rewards? Do you like the boss design? Let me know with a comment down below. And uh, once again, if you are interested in joining my clan chat, the clan chat is Flipping OSRS. Really trying to build it back up again so we can have a fun little community to discuss flipping. 
updates, real life, who cares? Come and stop by if you want to have a chat. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the recap. If you did, I would appreciate it if you left the video a like, and I will see you next time.